Good morning, everyone. Welcome to my hobby home. My name is Kathy. I have you on the road with me this morning going back home to Louisiana. I have been on the road probably about an hour now. I left Oak Grove, Kentucky probably about 6.45, so maybe I've been on the road about an hour and a half. Uh, yeah, about an hour and a half because it's 8.18 now. Um, and I just went through Dixon, Tennessee, and I just wanted to, uh, the sun is up good, so I thought, and no, no school buses, so I thought it'd be uh, good to bring you on here with me. Had a really nice trip to Kentucky, and of course I'm on 48 South. It is so slow driving this way. I should have gone through Paris instead, but I didn't. But it, it'll be okay. I mean, I'm still supposed to get home before 4 o'clock this evening. I try to get home because my husband has to head out uh, tonight going to Texas for some business. So, we, uh, we're just going to be like, two ships passing in the night, I guess. He'll probably have to head out a couple hours after I get in. But yeah, I thought I would bring you along. I want to give you kind of like a, I don't know if it's an update, review, whatever. I drive a 2021 Toyota Highlander. Um, I don't know. I'll, I don't know if it makes a difference. I will drive hybrid limited. That's what I drive. And we decided to buy the hybrid when my son was stationed in Kentucky or Fort Campbell in Kentucky, Tennessee, whichever. I don't know which one they classify it as. I think Kentucky, even though gate one is in Tennessee. It doesn't make much sense to me, but it don't matter. Um, Fort Campbell. We decided to purchase a hybrid. I did not want an electric vehicle because, you know, you have to plug those things in. And there's not a lot of locations where I live that has those. And I think that's just ridiculous anyway. Um, I, the hybrid I have, by my understanding... And I am going to say by my understanding, because I don't understand a lot about hybrids. But the Toyota Highlander has two electric motors that charge while you're driving down the road. I think at a certain speed, maybe they charge. Um, maybe like if you're coasting, like right now, I'm coasting. And my speedometer needle is down in the charge section on my um, speedometer. Well, not it's not a speedometer. It's It tells uh, where my RPMs are, kind of. Where if I'm in charge mode, eco mode, or power mode. If I'm in eco mode, that means that the electric motors are helping out which I try to stay in eco mode so I get the best possible gas mileage. As of right now, I cleared everything out when I filled my tank up last night so I could head out early this morning. I cleared everything out. I've gone 47.9 miles. I did get into construction in two locations, so I had some creepy crawly traffic in two locations is why it's taken me so long to just go that many miles and if you've ever driven uh clarksville tennessee or close to the air base early in the morning you will know the traffic is bumper to bumper um lots and lots and lots of traffic there in that area now it's not bad traffic i mean it it flows pretty good but you do have people that like to drive fast and i noticed this time when I was headed out, because every time I go, I head out pretty early. Um, I noticed this time when I headed out, there was a lot of cops there. 
you know, so I'm guessing they're probably cutting, you know, breaking down on all that um, speeding that goes on close to the base. Because there were, I saw two cops with people stopped this morning when I headed out. And so, I mean, maybe, maybe it's going to be getting better. I'm just taking you on the road with me. I'm sorry if you're getting dizzy. But I am literally only going 46 miles an hour down this road, which is perfectly fine with me. It is beautiful scenery. I love trees. I love mountains, hills, whatever these are called. I think I may be in the foothills. Um, because it's not really mountains. Right now it's just trees, I think. Maybe in with hills. But it is I I love this area. It's so pretty to me. I, I love Tennessee. I've not been very many places in Kentucky because I go just right into Kentucky. I've heard Kentucky is beautiful if you go like um, to the Paducah area or just further north than where I go. But I've always loved Tennessee when I was younger. Um, my aunt and uncle would bring us to Tennessee. Vaca we'd vacation through Tennessee. Um, going to North Carolina or some. You know, we would we would hit Tennessee because I remember doing Ruby Falls as I was young. We'd go to Gatlinburg and do Cades Cove and you know go through the Smoky Mountains. So I've always loved Tennessee. Tennessee has always been one of my favorite states to go through. And I mean, look at this. You're on the road and it's shady. It's beautiful, it's just beautiful to me. And the temperatures right now outside. Y'all, it's 67 degrees. This is so nice. When I got up this morning, it was 59 degrees in Oak Grove, Kentucky. So, that to me is just... Of course, you know now, I, I left Louisiana and it was 106 degrees. So, this, I'm loving this. Um, but they do have a lot cooler weather here than what we do at home. Just normal on a day-to-day -day basis just normally they do but what I wanted to do um, on my drive I'm I don't know that I'm gonna stop anywhere I'm probably gonna just try to drive straight home so I can see my husband for a little bit before he has to head out I had thought about um, stopping on my way home I don't know why my truck just gave me that notice I guess it was thinking I was off the road but I want to kind of give you um, like a miles per gallon thing on my truck or SUV whatever you're going to call it my I call it a truck because it's on a truck chassis um, I am currently at 37.8 miles per gallon that's my average right now and that's even in the hills now, I'm sure that will come down when I get on the open road, uh, because it normally does, because I'll be driving fast. In half of a mile, right turn onto I-40 West. Okay, that was my uh, GPS there. I have to be listening for my GPS so I can uh, go the right direction, because I don't know my my directions very well yet here through here and there are a lot of small towns through here next right onto I-40 West Proceed on the current freeway. Now this is going to be a little faster traffic for me. I'm headed towards Memphis now, but I will not go into Memphis. I will um, go around Colliersville because I like that drive a lot better. There's not a lot of small town stop and go traffic. And I like it when I can get go at a good speed. But Anyway, the, my average miles per gallon, I think, on this vehicle, on this trip, is about 36 miles per gallon. 
and for anyone that drives an SUV or has driven an SUV knows that they don't get the greatest gas mileage. I had the vehicle before this one was also a, a Highlander, but it was not a hybrid. And it was only front wheel drive. It was not an all wheel drive. This one is an all wheel drive. I don't know if that makes a difference or not. Okay guys, we are close to where I live. I just want you to see how dry it is out here. Um, this, we're actually in a parish right next to the parish I live in because I live close to the parish line. And in Louisiana, yes, we have parishes, not counties. It's the same thing as a county. Um, but we just, of course, Louisiana took the French name parish. So, I was hoping maybe we could catch a dust devil because I've seen several of them um, coming through. You know, as, I mean, I wasn't in Louisiana very long and I could see dust devils all in the fields. Um, there on the right of the screen is some large fields. I see they've got a lot of grass growing around them. So there, those are probably not, looks like soybeans was in that one, or is in that one. The one over here to the left, I mean, that one looks like it might have had corn in it. I'm not sure, I can't tell. Corn or milo. Kinda going fast here, I'm just ready to get home. Uh, Coming home is a nine hour drive because I left uh, during daybreak. It was about 6.45 when I got on the road. And when I went there, it only took me like eight and a half hours. It's taken me like nine, almost nine and a half hours to get home. Because when I went, I left at 2.30 in the morning and there's no traffic at all at 2.30 in the morning. I mean, I even hit Memphis and had very little traffic. So, you'll be able to see corn over there to the right. I'm surprised they haven't cut that corn yet. But we are on a uh, no-burn van. We, the, even the farmers can't burn their fields because it is way too dry and we've had uh, some fires get out in our area and burn and there was even a fire like not even a quarter of a mile from my house and thank goodness our local volunteer fire department caught it before it got up in the woods next to my house because if it had gotten up in the woods next to my house that would have been several homes including mine that would have been destroyed and that that would have been pretty um, terrible because a lot of the people own their homes so they don't most of them don't carry fire insurance because where I live it's um, where I live is family land so like it would be my house, my dad's house, which he has fire insurance on his home. And my sister's house, she has fire insurance on her home. I have fire insurance on my home. My aunt and uncle, they've owned their home for so many years. They don't have fire insurance on their home. Um, then we have some neighbors that they've owned their home so long, I don't imagine they have fire insurance either. So, you know, like a few of us would be covered by insurance if our home's caught on fire, but that doesn't replace, you know, all of our photos and our heirlooms that have been passed down from generations. And I know, you know, those are just material things, but, you know, we, we would lose all of that. And, you 
okay, that would be kind of devastating, especially to me because I'm a very, um, I don't know what it's called. I'm, I'm a very sentimental person. I, I keep things. I know it's not hoarding. It's organized chaos, but I keep things from, you know, like my grandmother that passed away. I have a vase from my great grandmother. It was a vase that she displayed in her home. Um, I have, I'm trying to think, my, I don't think it, I got anything from my, my mother's parents when they passed away. I don't think I got anything from their home because I believe I had a cousin go in and kind of wipe it out, which was fine with me. I, I didn't have to have anything. You know, it's not like I needed anything. But I did get some photos from the home. But, you know, I mean, just sentimental pieces, furniture pieces, things like that. You know, you just, you don't want to lose things like that. Now we're getting, there is a field over to my left over here, but I, my um, camera mount does not rotate side to side. It goes up and down, but not side to side. So, it's pretty fixed on my, my rear view mirror. And, um, so, I don't think you can catch. I'm trying to fix this on my mirror, too. to catch dust devils in these fields here because they're closer to home. Yeah, I saw a little one there. You might not have caught it. I see some of the farmers out here plowing up the fields. There's a big dust devil right there. I don't know if you can see it. It's already kind of well, it's still kind of hanging in there, over to the right. But anyway, you can see how much dust is flying around. Oh, there was two of them there. You can see how much dust is flying around, and it's just so dry, so, so dry. Which is not good if a fire gets out. Even though we did have a small rain, that ended our 41 days without rain. Since then, we've had no more rain. And it was not enough. My husband told me that the water hit the ground and then it was gone in less than two minutes because the ground is so dry that it just soaked it up. And he said it wasn't enough to really do anything. Now, see, here in this area, they have gotten more rain than where I live because they are further north than I am. And north of where I live, I mean, the rain would just miss us by like a couple miles. Now, see, they they're still real dry too here in the fields and I see the yards are looking kind of sad looking And these are very small towns, very, very small towns here. I love going through these small towns. See the local church right there to the right?
and we are now home. I am going to show you what my miles per gallon and how far my trip was. This is on one tank of gas. My tank is a 14 gallon tank. So hold just a second and I'm going to put you down on my panel here so you can see everything. Okay, you can probably see my trip was 463.3 miles. This is on one tank of gas. I have 55 miles left until I'm on empty. But look at that miles per gallon, 37.6. So that is what I get coming home from Kentucky to Louisiana. So for anybody that's interested in a Toyota Highlander Hybrid, this is what you get for the miles per gallon. And I wasn't straight highway. I went through a lot of small towns. I went through an army base. I went through a lot of school zones. So this has a lot of slow traffic, a lot of fast traffic. So that's what I get. So if you like this type of video, give me a thumbs up. I'd love it if you subscribe. Click on that notification bell if you'd like to see my videos as I upload new content. And feel free to comment. Tell me what you think about this. If you have a Highlander Hybrid, let me know how, you know, if you like it or not. What your perks, pros, cons, whatever. And as always, until I see you again, have a very blessed day. Goodbye.